Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to my second channel video. Did you know that the Olympics is happening right now? That's right, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, which started on July the 23rd of 2021, uh, is going on right now. And this is an exciting way for us to finally answer the very hard question of how many countries are there in the world? Because unlike a political government, the Olympics should be nice and easy. It should be recognizing which countries exist and therefore are playing sports. Because I've never been able to get into the Olympics, but I do know that although it's meant to be about the pinnacle of human accomplishment, it's always more about the countries. For example, New Zealand won the women's rugby seven gold. It wasn't this woman, and I guess rugby sevens, her, her six teammates that won it. It was New Zealand that won. Even if we take a single person sport, like I know tennis, the women's single bronze, medal match, Elena from Kazakhstan and Elena from Ukraine. That's crazy. They're both called Elena and they're from post-Soviet states. Uh, but it's not about the, uh, you know, the Elenas and the Elinas. It's about the Ukrainian and the Kazakhstan. Did Kazakhstan win or did Ukraine? It's very interesting to look at these different events to see that like, yeah, we, we love looking at these things in terms of countries. And so if it's all about countries and it's the pinnacle of all human accomplishment and all humans can participate, surely we can find the list of countries. Because if you've ever tried to Google what is a list of countries, you'll find it gets very tricky. Even if we try to look for the Wikipedia list of countries. That doesn't work that way. You look at it and you find this, the list of countries and territories. Territories being not a country, but rather kind of a part of another country. And then it gets really complex because even when you look into this, it's actually just a list of lists. And it's like, oh, I just, I just want to, I want to find the list. And then it's like, oh, here, here's the list of sovereign states. But the list of sovereign states is divided into three categories. There's 193 UN members. There's two observer states and there's 11 other states. What is an other state? Is that a real country? I mean, are they at the Olympics? No, but are some of the countries at the, uh, you know, are some of the countries at the UN at the Olympics? I mean, the Vatican, city is fully in there but or, or as an observer at the very least but like is it a, are they at the olympics i don't think the demographics of the vatican work that way and uh, even if we look into this list it's like okay so we look at taiwan uh for example a country that does compete at the olympics you can see it's not actually a recognized country even though most people would agree it is and then if we say that like okay being recognized doesn't mean you're a country then we also have to be like oh yeah you know that one region of, you know, that place in the world, uh, the Artosk part of maybe Armenia, maybe our Azerbaijan, maybe independent. Uh, as you can see, it's not re it's not recognized. And so like, oh, well, that's a re that's a fake country, too. But then like Armenia is not recognized by Pakistan because of that. And basically trying to find out the list of countries gets very hard very quickly. And so my point here is that the list of countries at the Olympics is so hilariously political that I wanted to dive into it just a little bit, because first of all, isn't it so interesting that the default way to look at the Olympics is by country. Shouldn't it be about the athletes? I mean, does anyone know who S. An is, the most successful Olympian so far, the South Korean in the archery category with three gold medals? You probably don't. Do you know who uh, A. Titmus is from Australia? I don't know who they are. What about E. Love from the ROC? That's the Republic of China, right? Because as we all know, when we look at our list of sovereign states uh, and we scroll all the way down to T, you'll find out that Taiwan does play at the Olympics. And Taiwan's official name, as it will say right here, is the Republic of China. Oh God, there is. <laughs> there is a lot of explanation on this one. But Taiwan is from the, is called the Republic of China, which should be the ROC, right? And But this man does not look like he is from the Republic of China. Can we, can we confirm that? Yeah, it, 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 this, 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 this is a, a fraud. He is actually not from there. And that's because I, I actually made a mistake when I assumed it was the, uh, you know, Republic of China. The ROC is the Russian Olympics Committee. And then it's like, but if the ROC is the Russian Olympics Committee, by the way, not Russia, because again, even when you try to just have some countries play some sports together, it gets political because the government of Russia uh, did a doping scandal, as it turns out. I don't, I don't fully understand why we can't. I think that like the peak of human accomplishment personally should include like, do whatever you want to your body, man. Like, I mean, if it can be done to a human physically without like cybernetic enhancements, it should be allowed at the Olympics. But I'm in the minority in that opinion, apparently. Um, you know, I, 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 I think that, uh, that that's a cool thing, but no, everyone agrees. So the, uh, because the Russian government had a scandal, Russia cannot compete at the Olympics. They have 
broken the rules, but the Russian athletes can just under the Russian Olympics Committee. And then it's like, okay, but that's that's great. You've explained that Russia is not on the list of countries recognized by the Olympics at the year 2020. But then if we dive down to like, what about Taiwan though? And the answer to that is they play under Chinese Taipei. Uh, Taipei is of course, if you don't know, the capital city of uh, maybe Taiwan, maybe a province of China. This is Taiwan. This is Taipei. Oh, this is New Taipei City. This is, it's, which is, I'm not mistaken, is like basically Taipei, and this is Taipei City. You know, I, I'm just saying, new Taipei City, I, I stayed there, wasn't that great. Maybe maybe I didn't do a good enough job, but not not a huge fan. Anyway, so Taipei, wonderful city. There's also, that, there's Taipei City, and then there's new Taipei, and then there's new Taipei City. Get, come on, Taiwan. I mean, I'm just saying, if I'm get, if we're going to recognize you as a country, you got to get your capital name under control. Imagine if London was like, yeah, there's London, there's New London, and there's New London City. We would go, no, this isn't okay. I guess, I guess America already does it with like, oh yeah, what's the capital? It's Washington. You, you have a state as your capital? No, we just named two things after a president because we're dumb. We don't understand how confusion works. Anyway, so speaking of confusion, uh, I wanted to go back to the list of countries because Chinese Taipei is Taiwan. And it's very interesting when you look here that like, okay, so Chinese Taipei, you know, 23rd, just below Romania, who's 21st. Sure, that's wonderful. Um, but if we look at further into the list, you get like, okay, so the ROC and Chinese Taipei, that is all of the confusion that can and does exist, right? There is no more uh, no, no more of that craziness that happens here. And actually, the answer is no. It gets more complex. It gets more confusing. And the, the, uh, and the reason behind that is because, like, okay, so all of these countries are exactly as they would otherwise be expected. Except, wait a minute, Great Britain? Why why is it called Great Great Britain? I, uh, isn't the country, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, maybe Google Maps could correct me, isn't the country called the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland? It just puts the UK in. That's embarrassing. Have to prove me wrong, Google Maps, don't you? But um, this is Great Britain. This is Northern Ireland. These are the outer lying islands. And then all of these other weird things are possessions or territories. Or, they're part of the United Kingdom or the crown, but they're also not. And it means that people can get annoyed. If you, if you say that, um, that, for instance, the Isle of Man is a part of the UK, you're both wrong and right at the same time. And on the internet, people love to correct that. I mean, it's very fun. Is it its own country? No. Is it a part of the UK? No. What is it? Don't ask questions. I'm just here to tell you what it's not. So the Isle of Man, as well as Jersey and Guernsey and whatever, all, all these weird places in the world are not part of the United Kingdom, but also are part of the United Kingdom, but they're distinctly not part of Great Britain. And so this raises the question, why does the United Kingdom play as Great Britain at the Olympics when they play as the, when they're the UK internationally in so many other ways? Um, and the answer is, uh, have you have you heard of this this place over here? You heard of anything bad going on there? Good, you haven't. Okay. Long story short is Northern Ireland is uh, both technically a part of the UK. It is uh, the UK is a country of countries, air quotes, with, uh, or, although it's actually three countries and a province or two countries and two provinces, if you want to go really wild. But uh, Northern Ireland is a place where about half the population feels very strongly tied to the UK and Britishness, I guess we could say. And about half the population feels very strongly tied to Ireland, which in some sense, because of its long history, is previously defined by being very not British. You know, that is one of the ways they would define themselves. And so it's very interesting that like, oh, there's this there's this province that doesn't know which, which country it feels more like. And the political angles of that are very interesting by themselves. So we've spoken about them. I'm sorry if I simplified and you're mad because you, you feel like I should mention that like Northern Ireland was actually stolen. And so this, the, no, we're just gonna say that's the very brief demographic version of it. I'm skipping over a lot of history to say that so Northern Irish athletes can actually play the great Britain or for Ireland because they can just pick. That's how a lot of things actually work in that same way. And so you know what else is interesting? That if uh, at the Olympics uh, we're called Great Britain, but at other, every other event it's called the UK, right? No, if you look at the UEFA Euro 2020 tournament, which incidentally happened in 2021 also, you know, what? What? what is the deal with this? I feel like I feel like there's a lot of competitions that were due to happen in 2020 that for some reason happened in 2021. Does anyone know what the story behind that is? I'd love to I'd love to hear why these events maybe got delayed by a year. I just I can't imagine why it would be. It's such a such a big deal. Anyway, so uh, the final was between Italy, a country most people recognize. I mean, Italian, uh, you know, people live there, but we all know it's Italy, the, the country that is very real. But then also uh, it was played between Italy and England. And it's like, wait. England? Isn't that like the, isn't that like just a, a part, like a, 
It's called an NUTS region, level two region of the UK. It's just, in fact, if here is the UK, right? Big country, only about half of the area belongs to England specifically. Here is England. Would you like to see England Street London? I want to see England Street London. You know what? Can we go on a tangent looking at... Okay, here's England Street London. That's, uh... If I'm... That's... that. You know what? I should go there. It's Mount Pleasant. Heck yeah, I'd like to go. Let's... Let's go to Mount Pleasant on England Street London. Man, look at this. You... You want to live... Oh, actually, it's not that nice. I mean, it's, it's not bad. You know what? I, I would like a house here. Would you like... I... I'm just saying. It's a nice little area. Look at... Look at this. There's a... There's a, there's a little crossroads. We're in, so this street right here played in the Euro 2020 tournament against Italy. And that's very confusing. And if you look into the uh, the round of 16, you can see Wales also played. They lost to Denmark, it seems, in a 4-0 in a destruction. And if I'm not mistaken, Scotland was somewhere there in the group stages. I, I don't know for sure. Wait, let's let's find out. I, they're, they're in there somewhere, right? So where, where are you at, Scotland? Scotland, Scotland, there you are, Scotland. Scotland's in there as well. So the UK actually plays as three separate countries. Northern Ireland also has their own team, but I think the team can then pick which way, whether they want to play for one of the other teams or not, because it's Northern Ireland, and we will just say, please, please leave us alone, we don't want to die. And so long story short, um, what is the list of countries? Here is your list of countries, but also, kind of, not really. The more you dive into it, the more you realize, like, wait, why does Hong Kong have their own team? And then you dive into more weird things, like, okay, North Macedonia, wow, proud of you, being officially recognized here at the Olympics properly. Um, but you also dive into things like, okay, because um, I'm, I'm, this is my curiosity. Have you noticed how China, the US, and Russia generally are the strongest countries at the Olympics? It's interesting there's like this strong correlation between like, um, what do we put this? Like international power and ability to deliver at the Olympics, I guess, I would say. Um, and so China, the US, and the Republic of... Uh, <laughs> I keep calling it the Republic of China. The Russian Olympics Committee, uh, unrelated to the Russian state, they are definitely not Russian athletes playing under a name that, dis that distinctly implies they're Russian. No, no, no. But um, it's interesting because when you look at this, it's like, uh, you know, superpowers do super, super well. In fact, um, the, the strong correlation here with the exceptions being like Great Britain and Australia is that the more powerful internationally your country is, although you could argue those countries are pretty internationally recognized, the better you do. Like New Zealand, what are you doing in 12? You're an island of like 16 people and some sheep. How are you beating Czech Republic? And like, uh, I don't know, what's a great example to beat Spain? Uh, how are you doing this? Also, Hong Kong and Chinese Taipei, are they, are they fighting? You know, like, do they have to be the best, not China, China? Like, cause that means that right now, China has three separate countries, uh, three separate teams. There's China, there's Chinese Taipei, and there's Hong Kong all competing as you know, that they're, they're, they're officially China, but they're competing as separate teams for some reason. And then there's like, why is Kosovo on here? Is Kosovo recognized by all the countries? It's not. It's recognized by only about two thirds of countries. And then even more interesting is like, okay, so there's there's all these weird things there. But the other weird thing is when you look at countries doing well and you realize it corresponds pretty closely to what? Population? GDP, maybe we could say. But the most hilarious example of like the, why the Olympics is just a very niche subsample of that is because although China, the Russia, the the Russia and the United States and apparently Japan because it's their home game uh, do so well, although these countries do super, super well, um, when you look down the list, you find some really odd exceptions. So um, let me find a fun example for you. The number of medals that India has is one silver right over there. So they're doing pretty good. Do you, do you, do you, do you, yeah. Good job, India. My, my speech patterns are falling apart. But in 49th is San Reno with one silver and one bronze. And so if we compare these countries, just, just for fun, I decided, you know what? Let's look into the population of San Reno, 33,860. What's the population of India again? I think it's like at least a few hundred thousand, right? Oh no, it's actually 1.366 billion. Um, that means that they have not just a thousand times more people than San Marino. If they had a thousand times more people than San Marino, San Marino would still be 40 times bigger than it is. They have 40,000 more people than San Marino, but are currently doing worse. Also, it's interesting, we could compare San Marino with the population of San Marino, California, which as you can see, very small place, not growing anywhere near as fast as San Marino, San Marino. But yeah, it's a mountainous microstate in Italy. Most people don't know it exists until you point out and you're like, oh yeah, 
I guess there is a country there, huh? How interesting. But um, you know what else is interesting? Uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was it was dumb. I I mean, this whole channel is just I, I want to talk about a thing I find interesting, and I hope you found this interesting because uh, I am back. I'm I'm in the UK now. This is my house. I'm here for only another couple of days until I can can leave uh, and actually go outside because I got I got vaccinated in America, which, as we all know. American vaccines, very different to British vaccines. It's a whole thing. Uh, so I'm, I'm enjoying my at-homeness, not watching the Olympics. But what I am doing is I am uh, simping for my own Patreon. Did you know? Patreon.com slash Toycat. We set up tiers now. <laughs> this is a this is a desperate money grab. Why why did anyone look? Since I lost it, why are people doing it? Look, there's not even an image for the strange beverage tier. Why why would you why would you do that to yourself? The answer is you shouldn't do that to yourself, but 17 if you have, and I'm disappointed in you. But if you do want to give me money in an entirely shameless cash grab, you can go to patreon.com slash toycat to do so. We did our first poll there recently, as well as some posts or whatever, because obviously, people who give me money, I, I care about you slightly more. Yeah, you're, you're, I, th th is that a good thing? I don't know. Is that capitalism working? Who knows? I just, I just enjoy money personally. Um, but if you look, we did our first poll and I just, cause I had two ideas I'd been sitting on for a while. Um, and, uh, people decided that instead of making a video about why is it called Great Britain, if it's only okay, uh, I should instead make a video about which countries would be better off if they switched places. So as soon as I get my full actual setup working, I intend to make this, this second video right here. Um, and so yeah, thank thank you very much, Patreons, for voting the second one. I was very sad I'd have to make a video calling Great Britain only okay. We all know it's great. We all know that as you like again, look, is Great Britain better than South Africa? I mean, in terms of in medals, yes. Is Great Britain better than uh, the Dominican Republic or Latvia? I mean, objectively measurable, yes, it is. Is it better than Australia? Apparently not. But you know what is better than Australia? Um, I don't know. Giving, giving me money for, for, for kebabs. Or you can leave me alone because this is the end of my video. Uh, have a nice day doing whatever it is you do when I'm not around because I'll see you next time. Second channel, don't care. Goodbye. Give me money though.